Kelsey here for WrestlingNews.co, and I'm with one of my favorite voices in all of wrestling, Excalibur. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. How much fun are you having working with AEW now? Literally the best job I've ever had in my life. It is the most fun I've had either you know professionally and in, in wrestling or in, you know in my day job it is this is a literal dream job to the point where i don't even think i could have dreamed this job would exist it is beyond my wildest dreams do you sometimes pinch yourself i mean you're on a national stage now working with two of the all-time greats it's yes uh, i mean it's not anything that i ever thought i'd be be doing and i couldn't have picked two better partners to have on the broadcast team. I mean, Tony and JR are living legends and getting to sit alongside them and learn from them every single week, every single segment is just a dream come true. You know, you it's mentioned- a dream like 20 times. You know, well, it is like a dream <laughs> yeah, I job. I think anybody would think yeah. that. So you mentioned previous jobs and how this one's your favorite, but I got to talk about one of your past jobs, commentating for PWG. Still a, still a current job, yes. so I'm still doing well, it. Well, past and current yeah. kind of, but I love PWG. It's one of my favorite things ever, you. and you're such a big part of that. You're such a big part of PWG. You're ingrained into the promotion. Talk about just the history PWG has and how it's kind of very similar to the feel that AEW now has. So, yeah, PWG has been a huge part of my life, and, you know, it's, it's something that after I retired, I was still able to be involved in wrestling, and then it's something that gave me the opportunity to start doing commentary. And it's really funny because if you go back and look at, I think it was the Pittsburgh episode of Dynamite, um, the, the, when we all came backstage after, because it was just action, 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 like all throughout, and we were like, wow, this is like a PWG show with a big budget. And so, you know, for people to think that is like, so heartwarming for me because it means that like PWG is important to so many people and we're just like this little you know this little indie in California I mean I understand that we have like a big reach but I mean it's still just we're a two-man operation we're like the, the smallest business and we I mean we keep it small for a reason but it's um, to know that you know we can have this much reach is just phenomenal it is really phenomenal and you know there's so many pillars who have had history in PWG now here. So, I mean, you, but Brandon Cutler, Sammy G, so many people, and of course, Rick Knox. Yes. I mean, he's such a big part of AEW. Talk about Rick Knox being on the roster too and working with him. Rick Knox is one of my favorite people in wrestling. He's one of, uh, I mean, he's just one of my favorite people, actually, I, I will say, say it that way. And so to, to have him you know, on board and coming along with this journey with, you know, every, you know, Matt, Nick, Brandon, like all those guys. I mean, I when when I saw the episode of BTE where they offered Rick the contract in the ring, I was tearing up and crying because I was so happy for him. And so it's it's fantastic to have him on board and get to see him every week. You know, before it was every, you know, like every six weeks or so. But now every single week I get to see my friend Rick and it's awesome. It really is awesome. And another cool thing is it feels like the Bucks are purposely making AEW kind of feel like PWG, but also just it's like that they're playing into things that are important to them, like emphasizing tag team wrestling, mm. for instance. Just talk about the Bucks' vision and how it's playing out and we're seeing it become a reality. Well, I mean, you, you said it right there. It's, they, they are tag team specialists. They love tag team wrestling, and they want to see tag team wrestling return to prominence. And so that was their major focus in this. I mean, it was as a byproduct of it, they got to get their friends and people they've come up with and people that, you know, they feel like they owe something to. They've been able to get them, I will be frank, pretty good jobs, and myself included, by the way. And so um, it's that, that, you know, like being able to take care of people was just as much of a driving force as, you know, bringing tag team wrestling back, back to prominence. Something that I'm sure is a little different from your PWG job is I'm sure calling the matches is a little different with JR and Tony versus Chuck E.T. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very much so. We did Dark yeah. last week and, and it was a little different than PWG, but you know, we still, uh, once, once we felt comfortable, you know, we were, we were cracking each other up. And so, you know, I mean, it wasn't quite as uh, risque. Is it, yes, it sometimes goes crazy. Yes, uh, but, but you know, we, we had a lot of fun and I think it's, it'll probably be the first of many. So you didn't talk Space Jam for 20 minutes. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so favorite match you've called so far in AEW? I know it's a short time, but. Um, geez, that's tough. Because there's been so many good ones in such a short period of time. Um, maybe, 
maybe the Bucks versus Lucha's ladder match, just because it was a phenomenal match, but it was also, I think, two guys that I've known for a very long time going out there and performing at the highest level possible. And I think right behind that, probably Cody and Dustin. That had a lot of emotion to it. That yes. was a great story. Yeah. And not to keep harping on the PWG train, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask, favorite PWG match you've called? So many good ones. So many. Um, I mean, I. It, it would take me all day to, cut, to, to, to narrow it down, but I mean, if you guys haven't seen it, go, go back and look for that DDT4 match between Kenny Omega and, um, and Chuck Taylor versus the Young Bucks because that is a pivotal moment in Young Bucks history and it's a pivotal moment in AEW history and all of wrestling history because without that night, without the crowd turning on them, um, they, none of this, they would have never gone down that, well not never, but you know what I mean. That path wouldn't have been right there and it was so pivotal that I, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, we've come a long way from F the Young Bucks to people cheering them being the most over guys in mm. all of wrestling almost. Final question, you know, there's a big show this weekend. What match are you most looking forward to calling? I've been talking a lot about the Young Bucks, but I just hosted a Young Bucks panel, so they're on my mind. Uh, Young Bucks versus Santana and Ortiz, really looking forward to that. And the Lights Out match with Kenny and Mox, um, I, that's gonna be bonkers and I can't wait. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Can't wait to see you uh, again and to hear your call when I rewatch the show. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you, guys. Thanks. That's it for WrestlingNews.co.